Thank you. Well, it's all terribly simple, really, isn't it? We've had one vote against the treaty in Ireland and one vote for the treaty in Ireland, so if we've got any sort of sporting um, sense, we ought to make this the best of three. But the difference is that with the third referendum, let's make it a free and a fair referendum. Because what has happened in Ireland most certainly is not that. In fact, I hope you're all very proud of yourselves because what you've done is you've taken the littlest boy in the playground, got him into the corner and given him a good kicking. This is a victory for the bully boys. It's a victory for big money and it's a victory for bureaucrats. The whole thing was a travesty. Oh, so you, so you, respect, you respect this vote, do you? You didn't respect the last vote, did you? The European Commission poured in millions of pounds of taxpayers' money to back, to back, well, pounds, euros, it doesn't matter. Well, it does in our case, because we've still got the pound, thank God. But you poured in millions. Something like a factor of between 10 and 20 to 1 was the outspending of the yes side to the no side. The Referendum Commission in Ireland didn't do their job, didn't tell the Irish people that, of course, the Lisbon Constitutional Treaty has profound, profound impacts upon their own constitution. And perhaps worst of all, the Broadcasting Commission in Ireland changed the rules so there wasn't equal coverage for the yes and the no side. The whole thing's an outrage. But what they did campaign on, what you all campaigned on, was vote yes for jobs. That's what it was all about. Well, hot off the press, folks. Aer Lingus have laid people off today, and Intel, the people who put €400,000 into the Yes campaign, have laid off 300 people today. 1,550 jobs have gone since Saturday. The only jobs that were preserved by the Yes vote were the jobs of the political class. I suspect that it's all over. I suspect that for Ireland, their period of independence will be a very brief one in their history. I don't think that President Klaus will be able to hold out. I hope that he does. He's a fine and brave man. But it looks like we've got the victory of bureaucracy over national democracy. In historical terms, I think Britain now finds herself very alone, perhaps as she was back in 1940. But there is a real debate. There is a real debate. There's a real debate here. What is the point of having a Conservative Prime Minister if Mr Blair becomes the overlord? What's the point of a Foreign Secretary if we've got an EU Foreign Secretary with his own diplomatic service? What is the point of any of it? As far as I'm concerned, this Irish referendum begins the real debate. There's no more pretending. If you want national democracy, you cannot remain a member of this European Union. And we will campaign for Britain to leave and to leave, Danny, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nigel Farage.